welcome to a new video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about traveling by train here in China. I think traveling by train here in China is the easiest and most convenient way. And since I've gone on a lot of trips here in China in the past 10 years, I thought it would be a good idea to share some of my tips and my best stories with you. Let's start at the beginning and with one of my first train journeys here in China. I can remember it clearly. It was 2011 and Chinese New Year. I'd only been in China for a couple of months and I didn't really know much about the country, the culture or any of the holidays. As it was Chinese New Year, I had some time off and after spending a couple of months in Shaoxing, I had decided I wanted to travel through China for a week or two. And at that time I just convinced Miguel to come with me and the plan was to take the train from Shaoxing to Datong and to travel to Pingyao, Xi'an, Chengdu and end our trip in Kunming. But as we had really no clue about how many people traveled during Chinese New Year, we had a really hard time buying tickets. It was such a struggle that we couldn't even go to the city we wanted to go to at first and we had to change our first destination. But because all of the tickets to Pingyao were already sold out, I think we had to go to Datong first instead. Um, so yeah, that was quite the adventure. And we also couldn't get the soft sleepers that we really wanted to have for such a long train ride, so we had to buy tickets for the hard sleepers. So needless to say that we weren't off to a good start. I quickly learned the lesson when I was planning that trip and booking tickets and that lesson is buy your tickets in advance, especially around holidays because otherwise there is a big chance that you won't be able to travel at all. Later during that vacation we ran into the same problem and it was really hard to get train tickets. At one point we had no other option but to buy standing tickets for the train journey from Pingyao to Xi'an. That part of the journey was quite the adventure too. It was so stressful to buy our tickets last minute. I wouldn't want to do that again. Uh, back then, though, it was still possible to get tickets from people who had bought lots of tickets and wanted to resell them, as you didn't need your passport to buy train tickets in 2011. I remember how the owner of the hostel we stayed at in Pingyao really tried her best to help us to get tickets. And eventually we got two standing tickets for our night train from Pingyao to Xi'an. Not something we really wanted to do, but we had no other choice if we wanted to continue our trip and leave Pingyao. So once we got on the train, we realized that the train was really packed and tons of people were on it with massive bags filled with gifts that they were bringing home for their families. We barely had any place to put our luggage or to even stand. And I remember I soon was given a seat by someone who was very impressed with my appearance. A tall and blonde woman isn't something they see every day. This entire trip taught me tip number two. It is best to avoid train travel during national holidays as tickets sell out quickly and trains are packed. By the way, let me introduce myself in case you are new here to my channel and this is the first video that you're watching. My name is Yvonne and I have been living in China for 10 years. And to celebrate that, I am making a special series about China. In 10 episodes, I will be talking about 10 different topics related to China. In the previous episodes, I discussed the reasons I love living in China, reasons why I enjoy working in education, the best places to visit in Beijing, and my favorite dishes to eat here in China. You can find the links to those videos in the description box below. Make sure to check them out and watch the videos if you want to know more about me and about living, working and traveling in China. Let's go back to those tickets for another moment. Like I said, it can be hard to buy them, especially during holidays, but it can also be a challenge to buy the right ticket. For me, it's become a lot easier now I can use Trip, WeChat or Alipay to buy my tickets. But for people who visit China for a vacation, it isn't always this easy. That's why I always advise people to have somebody write your destination in Chinese on a piece of paper or in a message on your phone. So tip number three is to write down your destination in Chinese. There are lots of places in China that have similar names. The names of cities can sound very similar, which can make it hard to buy the right ticket. Luckily, I haven't experienced this, but I know a few people who bought train tickets to the wrong destination because they couldn't pronounce the city name correctly and didn't know the characters for the name of the city. 
Another story that involves strains happened a couple of years ago when Miguel and I were visiting family in Shanghai. We had a great time together and at the end of the weekend we were having one last coffee before we would head to the train station. And I can't remember if Miguel and I thought the train station was closer to the coffee shop than it turned out to be or if we underestimated the time it would take to get into the train station. But I do remember that we missed our train. We ran to make it on time, pushed our way through security, skipped the line to have our tickets checked and ran to the gate. But unfortunately, they had already closed the entrance to the platform. Ever since that experience, we make sure we arrive at the train station early. And that is tip number four. Most of the time, we try to arrive an hour early just so we know for sure we're going to be on time and won't miss our train. Train stations are huge here and it can take some time to get through security and find the platform you're departing from. I have a few more tips to share with you, but if you're still here, please like this video. That really helps the video. And if you like this kind of content, make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of the next videos. All right, enough about subscribing and liking videos. Let's continue with some other tips about for traveling by train in China. I have to say that in recent years, my trips haven't been as adventurous as they used to be. The trains in China have developed tremendously and there are now a lot more high-speed trains available. Often, the high-speed trains are the better choice. But when you're coming to China to travel, I would look into the different options that are available. There are just so many different types of trains to choose from. There are high-speed trains, intercity trains, slow trains and more. It is worth looking into the different options you'll have when traveling from A to B as it can save you time and or money. So tip number five is picking the right train. A high speed train might seem like your best option because it's fast, but keep in mind that these trains are more expensive and usually only operate during the day. Also, they have been built later, which means the train stations are often further from the city center. So you might want to consider taking a sleeper train if you don't want to lose time on traveling or save money on accommodation. A sleeper train is a must anyways when you are traveling by train here in China. I have been on quite a few and in general I really like the experience. It is nice to be traveling at night and during the day you really get the chance to see what life on a train in China is all about. People will be curious to learn more about you and if you are friendly you can learn more about Chinese people. Overall, it's just an experience you can't really get anywhere else. So tip number six is ride the night trains at least once in China. I haven't been on a sleeper train in a while, but I remember trying to communicate with people in my compartment, sharing sunflower seeds and other snacks, taking pictures together and more. It is always a fun way to travel and meet local people. Speaking of snacks, make sure to pack enough of these. Snacks are essential for train rides and you really shouldn't forget to bring them with you. That means tip number seven is bring enough food and drinks. Yes, you will have the chance to buy snacks and even meals, but the snacks offered on the train might not be what you want. On the train, they will have instant noodles, sunflower, pumpkin or watermelon seeds, tea eggs, crackers or peanuts for snacks and simple meals for lunch and dinner. Personally, I'm not a fan of the simple meals. They're not always hot, the veggies are overcooked, and there is just not a lot of flavor to it. And on top of that, the smell of these meals isn't the best either. I usually bring an energy bar or two, a sandwich, some instant noodles and fruit. Most of the time, that is enough for me to survive the six to eight hour train ride. And if you want to be fancy while on the high speed train, you can just use your phone and order delivery to your seat. Talking about another important human aspect brings us to tip number eight. Don't forget toilet paper and hand sanitizer. This is also a good thing to bring for really any time when you are in China. I remember trips on sleeper trains where the toilets got absolutely disgusting after a couple of hours because the amount of people using them and because people started to use them as trash rooms. Chances are you have to walk through more than one carriage to find a usable bathroom. Once you find one, you don't want to be without toilet paper, which is why you really have to bring your own. Don't expect there to be soap either, so bring plenty of hand sanitizer and wet wipes to clean your hands. Of course, this is just for the sleeper trains, 
Most of the high-speed trains are very clean and the staff cleans the bathrooms every half hour or so, which means it is more like an airplane bathroom. Like I said, the situation on high-speed trains is better, at least in my experience, and I really enjoy taking the high-speed trains here in China. In a couple of hours, I can be in Xi'an or Shanghai, and while the train whizzes through the country, I usually read a book or listen to music while I recline in my seat and stretch my legs. So, tip number nine is bring some entertainment. You should be prepared to entertain yourself for the entire train ride, which could be four to ten hours. Stretching my legs when riding on the high-speed trains brings us to tip number ten, choosing the right seats. Being able to stretch my legs and having enough space is really nice, especially when you're tall like I am. I thought I wasn't going to have enough space in second class, but after comparing the first and second class, I found out that the second class seats are absolutely fine. There's no reason to buy more expensive tickets that offer almost the exact same thing. So when you're buying a ticket for the high-speed train, stick to second class. If you want to see what a first-class train in China looks like, check out the video that pops up on a cart now. These were some of my experiences with traveling by train here in China. Traveling by train is really my preferred way to travel here because it is fast and convenient. Also, it is a lot cheaper and better for the environment than traveling by plane. And trains here are almost never delayed. Planes, on the other hand, never seem to be leaving on time. So there you have it: ten tips for traveling by train here in China. If you have a great tip, share it in the comment below. Thank you for watching my video all the way to the end. And in my next video, I will be sharing tips for traveling in China. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye.